about some of the developments today. Uh, the press release went out this afternoon that the uh, UFL has decided that ownership of the uh, Virginia franchise, which is going to be coming somewhere to Hampton Roads here, uh, is no longer in the hands of Jim Spiros, who we've talked to a number of times over the last couple of weeks. The UFL, I believe, has taken it over. You're now going to be the president of the operations. How did everything uh, transpire today? Well, everything, I mean, it, it, the, the meetings went well. How it transpired is that the commissioner and the ownership of the league came to a decision because some of the some timelines were set that weren't, uh, and, and things that needed to be done that they felt wanted to be done weren't uh, done. So they decided that it, it's best to go ahead and let it be a league team and then create, if it takes a year or two, uh, takes a year to create the, the local ownership that they felt was the, the model of what they've done in other cities or doing in other cities. So uh, we did have an opportunity to talk to Jim earlier today, and he kind of, you know, kind of said the same thing that, hey, look, they wanted to move forward with a couple of different things. I wasn't ready to make that commitment. What, what have been some of the obstacles in moving this thing forward and having a smooth transition? Well, I, I think it's, it's, it's uh, I think Jim probably said it the best in the way he put it, just some of the things that, uh, that he wanted. He wanted things done for his individual market that the league has done does in all the markets. And the league wants to keep a, a, a straight formula in which all the markets have the opportunity to be successful. And to me, men from Virginia, understand it, Norfolk and Virginia Beach area, the Virginia Beach Norfolk area, historically has a great football history. You can talk about Ace Parker, probably one of the greatest athletes of all time, is from that area. Mm -hmm. Baseball and football, one of the few people, I think maybe the only person in both in both Hall of Fame. You look at you know Bruce Smith and Lawrence Taylor, some of the greatest football players, defensive football players. Well, Lawrence Taylor and Bruce, the greatest defensive players in the history of the professional of the National Football League mm -hmm. from that area. Uh, and the list goes on and on. You can look at the Norfolk Neptunes and one of the most successful uh, football team in the, in the Continental Football League was very successful. The only reason they ended up. The league itself, the Continental Football League, went away because they didn't get a TV deal. However, they stayed in business five years, which is incredible in the late 60s. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's, the area is dynamic. The area is ready. It has a great history. It has a tremendous uh, supply of athletes. And when you have an opportunity with something like the United Football League that's going to be that, you know, one of the few things, one of the things you know, John, that we don't get – as, as a, me as a former uh, professional football player, as a lot of professional football players, is you don't get a second chance. You really don't. Mm -hmm. But here's an opportunity to have a second chance. And there's no better place to be than Virginia Beach and Norfolk. You got it. Ed Reynolds is uh, joining us here on the 757 Club on 102 on the game. He is the uh, team president. He's going to be taking over the day-to-day -day operations. That's starting on Monday. When we talked to Jim, was this really a power struggle? I mean, when we talked to Jim a little bit, kind of got the idea, and you kind of touched on it a little bit, that this was sort of new ground for the UFL as far as a guy coming in and it's not a 100% owned by the UFL. Jim said, hey, look, in the past I've been, I've been used to these type of business arrangements where I have a little bit more control. At the end of the day, was it the, look, I want a little bit more control to do some of the things that I want to do, and the UFL saying, you know what, that's not how our model is. I, I, that that may be somewhat of it. I think, first of all, Jim is an extraordinary uh, entrepreneur, and he has done phenomenal. I mean, he's still legendary in Baltimore, what he did for the Canadian Football League, mm -hmm. and ultimately what he did. And so he gets it from the whole, from top to bottom, what needs to be done. But when it when it came to dealing with what's going on in this league, as you said, he, he had some things that he wanted to do that at this time it wasn't the it wasn't going to be allowed or wasn't going to be done at this time in this league. Um, like but, what? But, I mean, what what are some of the things? Because you've got to educate me and re really educate our listening audience to what the UFL is all about. I mean, we, we've done a couple of things over the last couple of weeks here. We've, we, we've had on some of the new players that have been in the league, the Jeff Garcias, the – the, the Amon Greens, the Dante Culpepper. I mean, on a daily basis, we're trying to educate the listening audience on what the UFL is all about and some of the teams and some of the players and the rules. 
What, what well, are you know some what, of the things? You know what I want to do is when I get back in town, what I want to do is, John, I'll come down and sit down with you. Okay. And we'll sit down because, you know, I, I'm kind of being a little unfair that you can sit in the car talking on my cell phone. Mm-hmm. But sit down, lay out everything about what the U.S. Because I've been here since the beginning. I left the NFL to come here. Okay. Because of, the, of what the, the vision of Bill Hamrick and, and the Commissioner Hugh had. Mm-hmm. And I came here with the understanding of this is the, some of the things we wanted to create, opportunity, finding new stars. And see, I worked with the NFL Europe uh, group of people. I've put a lot of programs in place. I've seen guys get passed over. And right now, from the, the time I first got to the NFL in 1996 to when I left in 2008, 2000, late 2007, is you see such a huge pocket of young talent out there that needs that opportunity. And then you get the right cities that are demographically and from a, uh, a TV market that doesn't have the proper exposure they should get when it comes to something like a, a professional football team. Uh, and Norfolk and Virginia Beach in Norfolk is one of those prime, great locations. And, and when we kick off in 2011, I expect uh, the Virginia Beach and Norfolk uh, team to be one of the best teams in the league. Ed Reynolds is uh, joining us here on the 757 Club. By the way, if the name does sound familiar, University of Virginia graduate, uh, played in the National Football League with the New England Patriots. We won't hold that against him in 1983. <laughs> uh, named team MVP in 89, spent some years with the New York Giants. You know, one thing that a lot of people are talking about, and, and this conversation, Ed, goes on, and you know this about this area, you got seven cities. You got seven different municipalities, city of Norfolk, city, city of Virginia Beach is one of the major obstacles right now trying to get these two municipalities to work together because from what I was told that maybe Jim went about it the wrong way in trying to get a little bit of cohesiveness between the city of Norfolk and city of Virginia Beach. I don't, I don't foresee the, the issue. I think that is something. Uh, there's, there's, in that area, as you know, with that, those seven cities, there's always been a healthy competition. Mm-hmm. And I think competition only makes you better. You want competition. Uh, from the, the meetings I've had, I look forward to coming back and, and meeting with uh, the mayors and, and working together. And I don't foresee any issue that's going to be uh, – all the, any issue that people may see from a uh, talk about or think about are non-issues to me because coming together to do something for the both communities uh, with this type of uh, – united with a professional football team is a plus-plus win-win for everybody. Hey, uh, what's the timeline now? I mean, I know the last couple of weeks we were talking about naming the, uh, you're going to name the team, we got to name the venue. I mean, what's the timeline that you've got laid out to, I, I guess the first step's going to be naming the venue, right? Yeah, well, I'll come, when I come in to sit down with you again, John, next okay. week, I'll, I'll show you a timeline. I'll cool. have it all mapped out for you, and then give you a, leave you a copy. Hey, look, if you can make it in on Tuesday, I got free barbecue on Tuesday. So I'm just free laying bar- it out there. Free, free barbecue. barbecue. Yeah, free barbecue. Come on into the studio on Tuesday. We got some free barbecue. We'll lay it out. We'll treat uh, you like a don't, king. You don't have to twist my arm. You'll see me. <laughs> well, look, I appreciate it. I know it's been a very long day. How many people did you meet with today? Uh, today we met with about five or six people. Wow. Long day for you, huh? Well, it's not a, it's not a long day when it's something that you know is going to be great and it's going to be very good for the market. And uh, and when you when I get a chance to come back home to be in the greatest, as I always tell everybody wherever I go, especially these people down here in Jacksonville, the great in Florida, the greatest state of the union is Virginia. Look at you, man. Well, look, I'm gonna put you on hold. I want to get some uh, quick info for you and shout at you a little bit, but I appreciate the time. I know you had a a very long day, and hey, look, a lot of people are you know real interested in what's gonna be developing here. I mean, they're they're excited about the UFL coming to town. But they're also you know, a little bit cautious uh, optimism there as well. So when something like this goes down immediately in this town, people throw up their arms and said, see, told you so, it's not going to be happening. Well, it is going to be happening. We just got to take a little fork in the road right now. So, uh, well, it's, well, of course, it's going to happen. It's going to happen big, and it's going to happen well, and it's going to be done right. And uh, we're going to make sure that uh, and it's going to be the most successful team as it, as it was in the, the – teams were in the Continental Football League. It's going to be the most successful team in the United Football League. All right. Great stuff. Appreciate it, Ed. Thanks. Roger that.